Well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Wednesday morning. Although I'm cheating a wee bit because I'm recording this on Tuesday afternoon, which is a beautiful sunny day. But we come to a, a passage that it's a little bit difficult. Ye yesterday we, we saw how people will talk about the poor but don't really do anything. Well, Zophar goes on to say this. When he has filled his belly, and this is talking about a, a rich man who's unjust to the poor and who basically is going to hell. God will vent his burning anger against him and rain down his blows on him. Though he flees from an iron weapon, a bronze-tipped arrow pierces him. He pulls it out of his back, the gleaming point out of his liver. It's, it's very dramatic, isn't it? Terrors will come over him. Total darkness lies in wait for his treasures. A, fan, a fire unfanned will consume him and devour what is left in his tent. The heavens will expose his guilt. The earth will rise up against him. A flood will carry off his house, rushing waters on the day of God's wrath. Such is the fate God allots the wicked, the heritage appointed for them by God. So, there is a sense of justice to come. I mean, it's really interesting. I think I, I read Tim Keller this week saying something like it's only those who've never e experienced real injustice and suffering who hope that there's no hell. There is a... Zophar's speech, they say there's so much that's true in it and there will be a day of judgment and day of justice. But where he's wrong, we said pastorally we've already noticed he's wrong, but theologically he's wrong as well because he makes no allowance for the possibility of repentance. He has no compassion and he believes that God has no mercy. He also has no doubts about his own rightness. I, I wonder if you've come across this. I mean, I hate liberal theology. I, I think it takes away from Christ. I think it takes away from his glory. But there are those who are sound in their theology, who can say all the right things, gone to the right colleges, pass all the right exams. But as someone has said, and I've got this quote, but I can't remember who it's from, so that's why I say, as someone has said, the tragedy of the unteachable is that they are most at home arguing theology, but it never touches their lives. It never touches their lives. God forbid that we would turn him or the Bible into something that's just a theology book, that's just a point of academic discussion or a point of tribal identity. I think that even being aware, as, as we've got in the passage before us, that there is a, a fate allotted the wicked, that the heavens will expose his guilt, that should make us tremble. It shouldn't make us gleeful or exultant. It should make us tremble. There is a judgment day coming. And then practically as well, I think that Zophar's speech is out of touch with reality. In a sense, he's an example of what Marx called the opiate of the people. Religion being the opiate of the people. A religion which designs, is designed to stop us thinking. A religion which is designed to stop us feeling pain and, and stop us acting. So that's what heroin does. Heroin stops you feeling pain. Opium stops you feeling pain but it makes you inactive as well. And there is a, a kind of religion that is like that. Now, that's not true of Job, and it wasn't true of his religion. He sacrificed for his children. He cared for the poor. He was a righteous and godly man, which is why he was attacked. Not, as Zophar says, because he was the opposite. And so we're going to come on to Job's response tomorrow. But... I think just now I, I want to come back to this theology that never touches their lives. Theology touches our lives because theology is just about God. It's about the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And Him acting upon our lives directly. I think when theology has become a dry academic subject, or one in which only experts can say anything. We're in deep, deep trouble.
we're like Zophar. Even with all his suffering, I think I'd prefer to be like Job. All right, guys. I'm Garros. See you tomorrow. God bless. Bye.